Toastmasters. Anybody? To eliminate stage fright. Yeah, improve your, uh, overcome your stage fright. Improve a simple answer, isn't it? Improve our nervousness, mm -hmm. avoid your nervousness, improve our communication and leadership skills. But why Toastmasters? Because Toastmasters is a place where we work on the, uh, what you call is a mutually supportive environment. Where each member supports another member to overcome their nervousness, to improve, where they identify their strengths and overcome their weaknesses. And this is done by an instrument called feedback, constructive feedback. In postmasters' parlance, it's called evaluation. Normally, we feel that evaluation has got a bad connotation. It's viewed as a criticism, you know, finding fault with someone else. In fact, some of the pieces with the ego gets hurt when somebody gets a bad review or criticism of that. But the advantage of Toastmasters is, we are all in the same boat. All of us want to improve our communication leadership skills. So we learn and practice a skill of feedback, which is not threatening, but it is a pleasant experience. This is what we do in Toastmasters. So now, we in Toastmasters, we have what, three groups or three areas. A speaker, an evaluator, and audience. You know, a speaker is speaking, an evaluator is evaluated, and will be observed. Now, these roles are interchangeable. Today, A is speaking, and B is evaluating. Others are watching. Tomorrow, B will speak, and A will evaluate. <coughs> and will be again observed. Now, the beauty of Toastmasters is, it's a, in a mutually supportive environment, it is a win-win situation for all the three groups. The audience, the evaluator, and the speaker. Even as audience, we get benefit by observing a good evaluation. For example, whenever, if there is a speech which uh, Mr. A.K. Prabhakara or Dr. B or Supreet evaluates, we are all ears. Because there is a lot of things to learn. The way they evaluate, the way they find the strengths in the speaker, the way they motivate the speaker, it's a lot of learning for the audience and person. That's as per the audience is concerned. As per the evaluator is concerned, evaluator gets an opportunity to practice the leadership skills, like uh, listening skills, critical thinking, the ability to evaluate or give the feedback, constructive feedback, and also how to motivate them. Person. This is the advantage for it. And also he learns the impromptu speaking skills of the practices because it's an impromptu speaking essentially. But as and for the speaker, which is the most center of attraction, he just benefited in three ways here. So now the first one is the speaker gets immediate feedback. You know the beauty of the speech is you know, in the same session, within a short time. After the speech, the evaluator gives his evaluation, you know, which is so much essential because it will be the speech will be fresh in the mind of the speaker and it becomes easy for you to relate what the evaluator is talking about. The points, the suggestions he gives, or the comments he makes, and the way the strengths he identifies, so that you can build on that. That's very, very important. Second is offering methods for improvement. You know, he is uh, getting the evaluator gives him the method how to improve from the various, uh, you know, whatever his strengths are there or in the areas where he can improve, he gives that. And most important, he builds and maintains self-esteem. You know, what really happens here is, in Toastmasters, the most important thing is building the self-esteem of the person. That's what happens in the US, in a, you know, in an icebreaker bad person, a nervous person wants to overcome his nervousness and if something untoward, something happens, his self-esteem gets affected. So it becomes necessary that you should build and maintain and that the speaker gets benefited in Toastmaster by maintaining his uh, self-esteem so that from speech to speech he you know, improves in his communication skills and it is called a virtuous circle. So this is very important in Toastmasters. So now, in Postmasters, we follow an approach called tell and sell approach. You know, tell and sell means when the evaluator talks, 
the speaker misses. You know, it looks simple. But you know, what really happens is, it is not that there is a discussion going on between the evaluator and the speaker about his strengths, his weaknesses, whatever. It's not that. The thing is, evaluator will speak this at is the strengths of the speaker, the areas of improvement, and the speaker, the speaker just listens to it so that he can concentrate on that. You know, this improves the efficiency of the meeting. You know, it prevents that. Uh, you know, that uh, conversational, you know, uh, dilemma. You know, when, when a group of people come in, and if the speaker and the evaluator start discussing what is his strengths and weaknesses and all that, then the meeting will start getting bored. That's why the talent cell is the only evaluator will speak and the speaker will listen. So that he can focus on what the evaluator speaks, he can, he can build up on that. Now let us see how to effect, evaluate effectively. Now what really happens in Toastmasters is every evaluator is given as, uh, every speaker is given an evaluator who gives uh, for the uh, uh, timer, you know, it's a 15 minute session. Actually, that is a give at 12, 14, 15. Yeah. Okay. So what really happens is, in every speech, uh, as every speaker is given evaluator, he evaluates the speech based on the manual guidelines, and he gives his personal opinion, the way he, his reactions on the speech. Here it should be remembered that the speaker is not an authority on public speaking or anything like that. It is just that he is giving his reaction, his personal opinion. It is not even binding on the speaker that he should follow what he says. And he cannot force the speaker that, yes, this is the guideline I am giving, you better follow it. No, he doesn't have that. It is entirely act. And he gives his personal opinion, personal opinion about what he likes about, how he felt about the speech, how, what he liked particularly about the speech, and what are the areas of improvement he is suggesting and how to do that. And the speaker is expected to take advantage of that. But it is not binding on him that you cannot even, the speaker, the evaluator cannot even say that I did not, you did not meet the project guidelines, so you better repeat it. No, he doesn't have the authority to say that. It is entirely to the speaker to decide whether he should repeat the speech or not. That is the one thing you should remember. And this particular <coughs> what really happens in the case of a, uh, yes, uh, your uh, evaluation is evaluation happens in three stages. You know the task of the evaluator is distributed in three stages. The first is before the speech. This is the first. Normally, you think that we come here to the meeting and we evaluate. No, job evaluator's job starts much before the speaker starts speaking. Maybe at somewhere at home or wherever where he discusses with the speaker about the project guidelines and the project objectives. Every speech in Postmasters has got its own objectives and it has got its own evaluation guidelines. The evaluator is expected to come prepared to the meeting fully knowing what the objectives are and what are the evaluation guidelines so you can really, truly know what he has to look for in the, meeting, in the speech. In the conventional postmasters uh, educational program, we had printed manuals for each of the uh, features. So it was easy because we have got printed material regarding the guidelines, the evaluation guidelines, objectives of the speech. So all the speaker has to do is bring his manual and hand it over to the evaluator. And he will follow that when coming to the meeting. But in the new pathways program, is everything is online. So the evaluator doesn't get the approach to the particular topic because it is only the priority of the speaker to open that page. So it becomes a responsibility of the speaker to download that guidelines and objectives, take a printout of that and hand it over to this during his pre-meeting discussion with the evaluator. So that evaluator comes back. You know, sometimes we see in our meetings here, New, because of their lack of information, they don't come, they could do, simply give their names and come to the meeting without getting the printout. And the, the loss is the, event, the speaker himself because evaluator gives an incomplete, he doesn't know what he has to evaluate or what is the criteria he has to evaluate on. It is very much important that you bring about, bring a, take out the printout and give it to the evaluator. 
And also, the evaluator speaker will have such a certain other concern. For example, sometimes the speaker will request the evaluator, in addition to the normal criteria, you also please evaluate me with regard to my body language, or the way I you move about, or you know, or about my nervousness, or about my ability to use humor. You know, certain criteria you may have his own concerns. So that the evaluator can concentrate on those aspects apart from the normal objectives and uh, guidelines. So this is as far as the, he gives a public manual objectives, evaluation guidelines, any concerns of that. Now, let us come to the during the speech. Now, this must be seen before the speech. Now, during the speech, what the evaluator is expected to do? First of all, an evaluator is expected to occupy a vantage position where he can see the speaker and hear her properly, or him or her properly, so that we can analyze the speech properly. That is very important. So, and more important, you should show that you are interested. And how do you do that show you are interested? By your eye contact, the way you look at with the speaker, and your body language, you say that you are interested in speech. You know, and second thing is put yourself in the speaker, in the position of the speaker. It is something like, it is very much essential for actually and then uh, your uh, evaluation because this is for required for empathic listening, putting yourself in the shoes of the speaker so that you can really analyze what this what, you know what the speaker's state of mind is so you can analyze properly and finally take a note have a pen and notebook so that you can make appropriate comments and I also also highlight use a highlighter which many of us use it. You know, so that you can highlight a specific point which you would like to concentrate when you taking giving the evaluation. This as far as the during the speech is concerned. Now we have got during evaluation. This is the most crucial phase because where we are actually delivering the evaluation. So now what we do that? The, the, there are three areas where we have to concentrate as far as the evaluation is concerned. The first is choosing your words. You know, the language and the words are very important. You know, in Toastmasters, we have got a mantra. It's called, an evaluator is expected to say, based on evaluation that, based on what he saw, what he heard, and what he felt. It is not something about general comments. It is about his own reaction. So the accent is on he. What he saw, what he felt, and what he heard. The whole entire evaluation is based on that particular aspect. And but why it is so? Because in many, many times an evaluator is tempted to use, you know, generalized words, something like, you know, people say, normally people behave like this, or you are expected to do like. You know, this kind of general statements or vague statements, it doesn't help at all the speaker. It has to be specific. You have to tell what is your reaction and tell in specific terms. And you cannot even tell, you be judgmental. You know, this is not the way you should have acted. No, such words are not acceptable. You cannot be judgmental. You have to just give your opinion, but cannot be judging. You should, what you did is not proper, or this is not the way to do. These are all the judgmental things which are not acceptable. But ideally, what an evaluator has to do is talking in first person, his own words, his own opinion. You know, in my opinion, what you did, you can whatever you want to say. Or I liked it when you said this particular statement. You really did a great job, and I really felt when you told the story, sobbing story of your voice. And you know, that's all. Or if you want to say the improvement, also you can say. When you say that particular thing, I felt uh, it could have done in a slightly different manner by using this particular thing. You know, that's what you say, you are not putting it being judgmental, you are not being critical, but you are telling your opinion. This is how an evaluation has to be done. So you have to choose your words carefully. Second, you have to evaluate the speech, not the speaker, because our accent of an evaluator is to help and motivate the speaker. So it is better you do not criticize the speaker on a personal level. You have to be very careful on that. So the, it is important the evaluator is expected to do evaluation 
based on what a speaker does, not on what the speaker is. That's the bottom line. So you have to be very careful. Don't evaluate the first speech, but uh, don't evaluate the person, but only evaluate the speech. And most important, promote self-esteem. This is very, very important. Because what we normally do is, we, uh, uh, particularly this is very much effective for you know, a newcomer who is nervous, who is hesitant. And if you give a very critical evaluation, you, know, you may probably not come for the meeting at all. You know, I got a bitter experience, I got a story to tell. Twenty years back, a good friend of mine who was a member of our club, a very articulate speaker, he was had tremendous leadership qualities, he was an articulate speaker, and he was identified from all of us as a future president material in our succession plan. But one critical evaluation by one of the insensitive member, you know, he felt so bad, his ego was so much hurt that he stopped coming for the meeting. In spite of all our cajoling and requesting, he, he lost a very good member. You know, that's why we have to be very sensitive in using our words properly. That's why promoting self-esteem is very, very important. Now, being positive is fine, but sometimes we go overboard. You know, only uh, praising the speaker endlessly, without giving any comments or with any suggestions or anything. Totally praising. You know, it is called whitewash evaluation. This is not acceptable. Because that doesn't chain help. Sooner it may be flattering in the beginning, but ultimately it affects the whole setup itself. We have to be genuine and we have to see that the evaluations of the upbeat and encouraging fight. But at the same time, we have to offer suggestions for improvement. It should not be a whitewash. We have to be honest and sincere and do a pro proper job instead of just a whitewash. This is very, very important. To conclude, we have learned the importance of evaluation, the advantage of evaluation for the, all the three parties in your the audience, the evaluator and the speaker. And you, uh, you, have, you have heard the story of my friend who has gone, uh, uh, how we have to be sensitive for evaluation. So what I suggest is, if you follow all the guidelines, what is being, we have discussed in the past, I'm sure you all become, can become a very good, very effective and motivating evaluator.